Hi everyone, good evening. I'm Amy Catcher. And I'm John Mercer. Thanks for joining us tonight. Well, we have some new information about the man rescued from Ellison's Cave in Walker County. Uh, the caver has now been identified tonight as Dwight Kempf from Pennsylvania. Kemp and three other experienced cavers were more than a mile inside the cave when Kemp fell more than 50 feet down a vertical drop. He spent more than a day inside the cave until rescuers could pull him out. He remains in critical condition from his injuries, which include a skull fracture and a broken leg. His wife issued a statement that reads, We are extremely grateful for all the teams from near and far who assisted his rescue. I especially want to thank the group of cavers who were with my husband taking care of him before medical personnel arrived. Without them, and without the rescue teams and medical teams, Dwight would not have made it out alive. But to give you some perspective of what it's like to venture into Ellison's cave, take a look at this YouTube video. This is what it looks like from inside, very dark and mysterious. And we spoke to one Walker County resident who has actually gone inside the cave and says he'll never do it again. I've known it's been up there. You know, a few years ago, I hiked, I found it, went in it, you know, and probably won't never go back in it. It's really not a safe cave. It's it's really nothing to play around with. I mean, it's a drop after drop. It's scary, um, easy, easy to get hurt. You got to have the right equipment. Now, two years ago, two inexperienced University of Florida students died in that cave from hypothermia when they got stuck on a rope. In 1999, another caver also died of hypothermia in that same cave after he became tangled in rope underneath falling water. Ellison's Cave is one of the deepest in the United States. And with the weather improving, it's not just caving that's attracting locals to an outdoor lifestyle. Yeah, people young and old are heading out trying new sports and activities, but there are major risks. WDEF News host James Mahan investigates the dangers of getting too sporty without enough training. He joins us live in the studio with more in our local perspective. James. When the sun comes out, so do the golf clubs, bikes, kayaks and running shoes. But medical professionals in our area are saying while being outdoorsy and healthy is important, it's vital to not do too much too soon. Chattanooga is, is blessed with having a, a tremendous amount of these athletes and then people are seeing that they're all of a sudden like, well, hey, maybe I can do that. I want to try it. It is trying too much too quickly that the most damage can be done. If you've been sitting on the couch for a while, you know, you're trying to relive those high school days when, or, you know, those middle school days when they used to jump trash cans on the bikes, you know, maybe you want to start at the river walk. Brian Smith of Parks and Recreation feels hydration and good training can keep our young people safe during activity and summer camps. And it's going to be hot. It's the days of summer. And it's upon our staff to make sure that they let the kids, let the teenagers know that they must stay hydrated. They must drink plenty of water. For one Chattanooga chiropractor, everything from kayakers to rock climbers have come calling with injuries that could all have been avoided. It's great weather outside right now. A lot of us are getting out the golf bag. We're going and hitting some courses. Make sure that we're staying loose and flexible. We see a lot of shoulder injuries. We see a lot of hip injuries in our office as well as in our other offices. Dr. Taylor has these words of advice. Make sure, like we said, you're staying loose, you're staying flexible, and you're warming up. Everyone we spoke to said the dangers of sunstroke are very much upon us. And it's crucial that the public use appropriate protection and don't take their health for granted. <laughs> Parks and Recreation as well as Outdoor Chattanooga will be putting on activities for toddlers up across the summer months. And for more information on how to get outdoorsy and still be safe, check out our website WDEF.com. Live in studio, James Mahan, WDEF News 12. Thanks, James. Chattanooga police investigate two shootings that happen within 10 minutes of each other. The first one happened around 11.30 last night on Bennett Avenue. Police say 21-year-old Ashton Ammons was shot in the leg while he was standing with a group of friends. A man he was with spoke to News 12 this morning. We was all in the corner and the cop pulled up. You feel me? They started shooting. We took our run. I don't know who it was. But they came by real fast. AJ hit the block by two times, though. I hit a block by two times. Minutes later on 5th Avenue, 19-year-old Shannon Cooley was also shot in the leg. Officers say he was standing with a group of people at East Lake Courts when that shooting happened. There's no word on any suspects in either case or if these two shootings are related. Frustration continues for residents in one East Ridge neighborhood affected by a weekend water main break. They're upset by the damage to their property that fix left behind. WDEF News' Eric Avenier has a nice News 12 update. This is what the 3900 block of Fountain Avenue looked like Sunday afternoon as crews worked to repair a broken water main, a large gaping hole, tons of water pumping down the street, and piles of concrete and rock that was not only blown, but dumped by crews on several front yards, leaving some homeowners frustrated. 
the dirt and the rocks, uh, that was just, a, has been amazing how much was uh, dumped into our yards, dumped into our driveways. And this is what it looks like now. The hole is filled. The concrete and rocks have been picked up and crews have been going door to door trying to clean up the mess. But half of Ernestine Hurd's front yard is ruined. Now she says she's trying to figure out who will pay for the repairs. I've got a call into the insurance company right now and it's not really clear what, who's going to cover what. But help is on the way. A Tennessee American Water representative tells WDEF that homeowners who receive damages as a result of the water main break or the piles of debris on their property will be taken care of. We're told the company will even go as far as to fully restore this front yard. In Eastridge, Eric Avonier, WDEF News 12. Officials still don't know what caused that water main to break. Tennessee police will be cracking down on drunk driving starting this Friday at 8 p.m. Now, officers will be holding sobriety checkpoints on Birmingham Highway until 10 p.m. The event is part of the Tennessee Georgia Hands Across the Border campaign. Well, the Affordable Care Act is a fact of life and will go into full effect December 31st. U.S. Senator Bob Corker says it will likely have a major negative impact on small companies and especially employees. WDEF News says Bill Mitchell was there when Corker spoke to the Cleveland Rotary Club. Regardless of your personal opinion of the so-called Obamacare, says U.S. Senator Bob Corker, it's going to happen. The senator told the Cleveland Rotary Club the controversial legislation could mean big trouble for the American family. I think most uh, small and medium-sized companies are going to do away with their health care plans because I think they're going to find that it's going to be better off for their citizens, for their, for their um, employees and better off for them. Corker says those employees could become eligible for subsidies, but the cost would be huge. I just had Blue Cross was just in my office recently. Uh, I've had the other companies.